Well, a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today for this webinar on the Sustainable Development Goals and Seizing the Business Opportunity. My name is Rupert Hill and I'm the Communications Manager here at eReValue and I'm delighted to say that we have a large and global audience joining us today. Thank you all for joining and a special mention to those tuning in early on the west coast of the US or joining us late in the day in Asia. It's excellent to have you all with us. Taking you through the first half hour or so of this discussion will be our expert panel. Among other things, they'll be talking about the role of corporate reporting, why and how to engage the board of directors, and how to ensure that company strategy is aligned to the SDGs that are relevant to your business. And subsequently, how technology can be used to make them actionable. Afterwards, it'll be your chance to get involved and we'll have 30 minutes or so allocated just to your questions. So please send them in via the Q&A box, which you'll be able to see either the top or the bottom of your screens. And we're trying to get to as many as we can. So without further ado, I'll briefly introduce you to our panelists before we get into the meat of the discussion. Firstly, I want to introduce Elisa Tonda from UN Environment. Elisa is the head of the responsible in industry and value chain unit in the economy division. Their main goal is the promotion of sustainable production and consumption practices through the engagement of the business community. And Elisa works with both the private and the public sectors. Today, she will touch upon the expected role of business in 2030 and how UNEP is taking that forward. The second speaker is Hella Bank Jorgensen. Hella's accomplished a lot in her extensive career. She was the first creator of the world's green account later the world's first integrated report and holistic supply chain program. Since 2012, she has run her advisory company, The Accountability, and was recently chosen as one of 12 global facilitators for the UN's Global Compact Board Program. And she'll go into more detail about the role of the board in relation to the SDGs very shortly. It's also a pleasure to say that Hella serves as the chairwoman of Erie Value. Moving on to our third speaker, we have Samantha Mizrobian from Scotiabank. Samantha has been with the company for nine years and is currently the Director of Corporate Social Responsibility, responsible for leading the CSR strategy, reporting, stakeholder engagement and communications. And today, she will detail what initiatives Scotiabank are implementing in relation to the SDGs. Finally, the last speaker to introduce is Erin Levy from Erie Value. Erin leads the research team here on the direction and the scope of analysis provided to clients. Before that, Erin was an SRI analyst for Responsible Investment, analyzing companies on their ESG performance and building responsible investment research strategies for institutional investors. Erin currently sits on the SDG Advisory Committee for the UN-supported Principles of Responsible Investment. And finally, our moderator, who I'll pass to in just a second, um, is Emily Chasen from Bloomberg Brief. Emily is the editor of Bloomberg's weekly sustainable finance brief on trends for investors following sustainable, responsible, and impact strategies. And we're very pleased that she'll be joining us today. So a warm welcome to her and to all the panelists. And a quick um, piece of housekeeping before I pass over to Emily. Throughout the webinar, you can join the conversation on Twitter via hashtag SDG webinar and through the Twitter handles um, of each of the, the panelists seen here. So now over to you, Emily. Hi, thanks so much Rupert for that great introduction. Um, I'm pleased to be here today with everybody to talk about the sustainable development goals. Um, I know when lots of people talk about them, um, if you're not familiar with them, let's just all get on the same page, that they are this global agenda to end poverty by 2030 that 193 member states of the United Nations signed in 2015. Um, goals like zero hunger, education, you'll hear more about them today and become an absolute expert, I'm sure. Um, but what's really interesting is the way that companies can use these sustainable development goals to think about risks, but also an opportunity. Um, we don't often get a crystal ball in life, but this is definitely one of those things where you can look at how the world is going to shape itself in 2030. And um, 
in terms of opportunity, the Business and Sustainable Development Commission put out a great report earlier this year saying that this is probably a 12 trillion opportunity in terms of investment in mobility systems and healthcare solutions, energy efficiency, clean energy, affordable housing, food waste, agriculture, urban infrastructure. <laughs> There's so many different places that different companies touch on the sustainable development goals. Um, so we're going to hear a lot about that today. And please, if you have questions, feel free to send them in at any time. And we'll come back to a Q&A session at the end. And I'll um, try and collate some of those questions for our panelists. So let me hand over to Elisa, who's going to talk a lot about the expected role of business by 2030. Good morning. Good afternoon to everybody. And um, please, ask to move to the first slide of the presentation. As uh, said in the introduction, I do work for UN Environment. Some of you might know our organization through the acronym of UNEP, so it's really the same. And uh, when I was uh, suggesting with the other speakers on how to kickstart the discussion, the first idea that crossed my mind was a very, very lively and interesting exchange that we had last year in the course of the UN Environment Assembly, which is the gathering that brings together the ministers of environment of the world that are the ones setting the agenda for our organization, jointly with representatives of the business community, what was going under the, the name of the Business Dialogue for Environmental Sustainability. And you see in your screen, a bit of a snapshot of uh, how the discussion was going about. And I just would like to highlight one or two uh, interesting remarks that might be sparking some discussion in the course of our webinar. What was very, very interesting um, in that specific venue, one of the first comments that was raised was indeed that the role of businesses in promoting environmental sustainability had to somehow shift uh, to, uh, let's say, thinking that this would be done by a high level representative from the business community speaking at high level UN events, but rather rethinking their everyday work and operation in the perspective of these global agenda and its implication for the private sector. If you look at the ambition of this agenda, this is not really about doing more of the same. It is about the innovative role that business can play in making sure that those ambitious goals can be achieved. Few references, few words, few expressions that were used in that discussion were really speaking about transforming businesses into good corporate citizens uh, in the world, developing a value proposition about the sustainable development goals in what they were doing, and a very strong reminder that at times in our discussion, we speak about businesses, we speak about private sector as a unique uh, entity, while it's um, an addition of very, very different, well, the slides call it very different beasts in the sense of very different entities with different roles and responsibilities. And a lot of those that were participating in the dialogue were recalling, for example, the specific role that small and medium enterprises play in the context of promoting the economic development of countries across the world. Very, very interesting references were also made to the importance of ensuring that investment were really going into the direction that was framed in the sustainable development goal. So this leads me to the next slide, if we can move to the following slide of the presentation, that uh, somehow reflects the spirit within which we see the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable de Development and what it entails for businesses. There is a lot of rethinking and being innovative in the way in which businesses contribute to the achievement of this agenda by creating new solutions that 
enable progress towards this vision that is reflected in the Sustainable Development Goals. And there is also a call to be capturing that progress in the context of uh, reporting practices. And I know we will be discussing more about these in the course of the webinar. But what I think it is really important not to dissociate in our conversation is that it is not about exclusively capturing uh, a performance or capturing an existence of a report, but it's really having this as a way to, to monitor a transformation in which business is contributing to this global agenda. And in this context, I would really want to uh, recommend uh, a very, very good publication, which is the SDGs Compass that has been uh, pulled together by some partner agencies, the UN Global Compact, the Global Reporting Initiative, and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, which is an excellent way to raise awareness of the implications of this agenda for private sector. There is a lot of awareness raising, a lot of uh, um, growing an understanding of what this agenda entails for the private sector uh, that would need to be done by those who are closer to these discussions. So a strong encouragement to those who are um, part of this conversation and are more knowledgeable not to be shy, shy and to go out and, and share their understanding of the role and the connection between businesses and the sustainable development goals. And I move now to the last slide on which I would like to comment a bit of the future way forward in which our organization is being engaged. As you know, the, the sustainable development goal is a very, very complex framework with 17 goals and hundreds of targets to which numerous indicators are attached. We're talking about a realm of close to 200 indicators under discussion to really track progress towards that vision. Um, our team and the colleagues of ANTAT, which is the UN uh, Conference on Trade and Development, are actually in the process of working on one of these indicators, which is the indicators that goes under the numbering 12.6.1, which is an indicator that really speaks about the shift towards more sustainable business practices across the globe and reflecting that result, that outcome in their reporting uh, um, practices. And in this sense, uh, ongoing work is there to really be able to capture in that indicator that interconnection between reporting and the ambition and vision of contributing to the 2030 agenda. So I'll take the opportunity also to warmly welcome whomever would want to really share their best practices and their experiences to that end and to help us shape uh, that indicator that will measure this global ambition. And I'll hold here and look forward to uh, interaction with the participants in the webinar. And over to you, Hella. Um, so let me start. I can see now that I'm unmuted. Um, first and foremost, thank you so much, Elisa. It's a brilliant way and I totally agree that this is about transformation and having everybody, including uh, businesses on board. And I, I guess I am here today to talk about uh, the board of directors in that regard. But first and foremost, um, Rupert, thank you so much for the introduction. I have to say, I must say, uh, it is such a pleasure to be the chair of such a fantastic company as eBevalue. And I am very proud of your, our achievements in, in that regard. Uh, but let me just go then to the, to the next slide and, and let me start my, uh, my five minutes here. Um, 
So I was asked to talk about how to use the sustainable development goals as an instrument to elevate the sustainability discussion in companies. But I have to say that this is not only a sustainability discussion. This is a strategic discussion that also needs to be held at the board level. No company, no board can hide and say that the goals are none of their business. And therefore you see this picture from Toronto Stock Exchange where we have people with, with the SDGs uh, icons in front of them. Um, if I look at State Street Global Advisors, the CEO Ron O'Hanley said in his annual letter that in 2017, so now, we will be increasingly focused on the board oversight of environmental and social sustainability in areas such as climate change, water management, supply chain management, safety issues, workplace diversity, and talent development. All of this is in the SDGs. So this is a main street asset manager with over 2.4 trillion US dollar in assets under management. And this letter is sent prior to the proxy season, where many of the mainstream investors are actually significantly increasing the number of staff that's responsible for scrutinizing what companies report in order to prepare for the proxy season and for voting. So again, I do not believe that now we have, or boards have any place to hide. Or as Michael Tresco, the, the chair of Unilever said in a podcast that I did uh, with him last year, if we can go to the next slide, Rupert. So what Michael Tresco was saying when we talked about the, the sustainable development goals, he said, there's something for every company, big and small, global and local, it should be embedded into your business. And something else he said in that podcast what that, was that boards should ensure that all the right questions of today and tomorrow are asked. No question should be left behind. And I think this is very, very wise word. I should say Michael Tresco uh, was um, the chairman of the board of Unilever until April. So I think I did this in, in, in the spring um, last year. And I know because that was another thing that, that Michael Trusk and I discussed was, well, that's the Unilevers of the world. And yes, many of you might think, well, that your board does not see the sustainable development goals as anything else that uh, sustainability issues that the sustainability team is to take care of. Or as somebody said to me, it's just another standard. Uh, I'm sure the sustainability and communication team will cover that. Or you might say, well, my board is not aware of the sustainable development goals at all. But from my experience working with the board of directors, this is because they haven't been told what Agenda 2030 and the sustainable development goals really is. Um, so my board clients, they are very positively surprised when they realize the opportunity. So let me give you a little bit of what I, what I tell them. And if we can go to the next slide, Rupert. So I tell them um, that the stakeholders from all over the world, business, investors, government, customers, current and future employees, et cetera, all had a voice. And that millions of stakeholders from all over the world was actively involved in determining these 17 goals. It was a bottom up process. And you all on this call and in the boardroom around the world was able to contribute. So we have actually here in front of us the result of the world's most comprehensive stakeholder dialogue and materiality assessment. So when I talk to boards, I tell them that this is the world's 17 biggest pains and there is a world agreement on the timeline and clear accountability measures. So very easy, very predictable, fix the pains by 2030. Think about it, often a company come up with its own pain points that they believe the intended customer needs a solution to, so they can sell their products. But the 17 goals are what the world's population has decided it needs. So solving the pains are a key priorities for not only the companies, but for governments. 
being part of the solution is increasingly expected by investors as well as the talent that companies want to attract. So think about the letter from State Street that I referred to. Investors are also going to ask questions. So not only is this 17 pain points, it is 17 opportunities for innovation, for reinventing the purpose of the company. Um, and one thing is sure that the board better take decisions that make the company they serve part of the solution and ensure that the company is built to last. They need to discuss what it will take to keep the license to operate and the ability to stay relevant and ultimately to exist. Or as Richard Branson um, was saying, every company has the potential to change the world and will not survive if it doesn't. Just the very last uh, to perhaps summarize on, on the next slide, Rupert. So to summarize, I would suggest that you use the sustainable development goals as an instrument to elevate the built to last discussion in companies. I would suggest that it's not only a sustainability discussion, but it's a discussion about, as I said, the 17 biggest pain points in the world, the 17 biggest opportunities for innovation, the 17 biggest reasons to be a purpose-driven company, and the board needs to assess and act. They need to align to the current strategy. They need to figure out what is the current impact on or by the sustainable development goals to our business. What is the future impact? What, what this crystal ball that we were talking about or the scenarios, what will be the future impact? Is there an opportunity for innovation? Is there an opportunity for action? And I think that the opportunity for action will be there for all companies. So last but not least, utilize the goals to align with a bigger purpose and improve and foster relationship with customers, employees, community, governments, and yes, investors. I think that's, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hella, and over to you, Samantha. Thanks very much. Hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, so if you could just go to the next slide, Rupert. I just wanted to share this as an example of some of the resources that are available through the UN Global Compact. So if you're still struggling um, with how to align uh, your organization to some of the SDGs or which ones, uh, which SDGs you can have the most impact in, uh, or want to really focus on in your organization. This, the UNGC has uh, specific industry matrices. So I've just grabbed a screenshot here of one page uh, within the financial system um, matrix. Uh, and I just want to say that um, going back to Halle's uh, discussion, the, the relevance of sustainability in your organization is gonna impact the level of executive conversation. So um, my, my point would be to make sure that you're using the right language. And if they are not familiar with the term sustainable development goals, talk to them in terms of the sustainability initiatives, but use the language that is going to resonate with them the most. Um, uh, and that's it. So if you want to go to the next page, please. Thank you. So um, as an organization, there's a lot of areas in the, within the 17 SDGs that Scotiabank uh, can contribute to, and in fact, many organizations can. We're focusing on six. Um, and the other thing that we focus on is to drive impact in the areas where we operate versus a broad global mandate. So uh, we operate in approximately 50 countries around the world, and so all of our programs and initiatives are focused on those uh, countries of priority. So I'm just gonna to talk to you briefly about some of these. Uh, and I think the point that I wanna make is that a lot of organizations are already doing initiatives within the SDGs, but what are you doing differently and how are you gonna drive broader impact? Um, so for the first one, no poverty. From an FI perspective, that means financial inclusion. So we have a lot of programs in Latin America and the Caribbean regions that drive improved access to financial services and access to financing through micro lending. But a lot of that access is technology enabled. And so what we're trying to do differently as an organization is invest um, significant amounts of, of, um, of resources into technology. Um, I'm gonna come back. So that's what we're doing differently. So, and the other is 
that we also, um, an example is that we're partnering with governments in some of our countries. So that was, if you look at number 17, it's about um, partnerships for the goals. And so that's another thing I wanted to point out. You don't necessarily have to think that your organization is going to drive change on its own. You can drive further change by partnering. And so we're doing a lot of initiatives on access to finance in some of our, our key markets in LATAM. So I'm not going to talk to um, number three and number four yet because that's I want to give you an example of what we're doing differently. Um, for gender equality, number five, it's part of our diversity and inclusion priority within the bank. So again, it's something that we're already focused on. Uh, and in 2016, we exceeded our 30% target of having women in VP plus roles. What we're doing differently uh, and what we hope that will drive um, more impact is that we're participating with two speakers from our organization in the Gender Equality Forum in Toronto. And we're hoping that that initiatives like this will lead to broader collaboration and, and, and collaboration. So again, it's not just the fact that we're participating in a forum, but we're hoping it will lead to other things that we can do to drive impact. Number eight, decent work and economic growth is supported by our commitment to helping our customers become better off and also by providing employment opportunities as an organization. Um, but it's also through our lending practices to businesses and entrepreneurs. This is really who we are as an FI. Uh, and I think actually all of uh, any financial institution, well, actually any, any organization should be focused on some of the, the goals within number eight. Number 13, climate action is supported by our party to reduce our own footprint. Um, what we did this year that's new for Scotiabank is we joined the, uh, sorry, last year in 2016, we joined the Carbon Pricing Leadership Coalition to drive change. Um, and we're also working now with the Ontario and Federal uh, Government of Canada to install electric vehicle charging stations to support their efforts as well um, to drive impact on climate change. Uh, and also support their efforts to transition to electric vehicles. So if you go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, th as I said earlier, I want to talk about what we're doing differently in uh, number three and number four, good health and well-being and quality education. Uh, first of all, um, we're focused, we focused our community investment strategy to support young people in the community. So. We used to have uh, a community investment strategy that was more of a spray and pray, uh, and it was really hard to spread out a limited number of dollars and ensure that you were actually having impact on those uh, investments. So we have refocused our investment funding on young people, and we've also focused our um, investments in these two SDG areas, health and well-being and quality education. Uh, we aim to support organizations that are committed to helping those young people in the community reach their full, full potential because we believe it's an investment in the long-term security, stability, and growth of both our communities and our business. Uh, young people are our future leaders, and Scotiabank School is to help provide them with the necessary skills and resources they need for success. So it's really important uh, for us to be able to measure our impact in that area. Um, the other thing that we've done um, that's different is we had, we established an advisory council of youth experts in the space in health and education from around the world. Um, and we tap into their expertise on a number of levels, but we also tap in the, into their expertise to an establish a Scotiabank Young People in the Community Index, which uses globally available data to understand the state and health and well-being and education of young people. Um, and predominantly, again, in the countries where we operate. So some of those statistics are, of course, globally available, but we're interested in those statistics in the, com in the countries where we operate. Um, the index is uh, also a call to action for NGOs to collaborate in getting more useful data to inform the right types of initiatives. Scotiabank alone cannot index impact the index results, but we use the index to inform our funding decisions. And in collaboration with other organizations, we can positively impact those results together for health and educate for improved health and education for young people. So that's it for me. I'm going to pass it on now to Aaron. Thank you very much, Samantha. And yeah, over to you, Aaron. Perfect. Thanks very much, um, uh, Rupert. And thanks, hi to everyone joining the webinar globally. Um, so firstly, I just want to say a huge thanks to uh, Elisa, Heller, and Samantha for providing their insights today. For my part, I want to quickly just run through three opportunities drawn from SDGs research and data technology processes that show how companies can capitalize on the opportunity presented by the Sustainable Development Goals. 
So to begin with, uh, companies can align with the SDGs through their business activities. What we know about the sustainable development goals through corporate reporting is that the largest companies globally are already taking steps to action the SDGs. So frameworks that uh, Elisa and Samantha kindly alluded to, such as the SDGs Compass, are tools for industry to identify the relevance of issues in relation to the goals and their business. So the graph that I put up on the screen there illustrates results from public disclosure documents of SDGs linked to the relevant business activities of financial services companies in the US. So you quickly see through this exercise of mapping business issues with the goals, which of the SDGs appear as a natural fit. So the case for alignment is strong, but the uptake is slow. So when we look at how companies manage these issues and speak to businesses about their risk management processes, more often than not, non-financial issues are siloed and kept at arm's length from key business activities and decision making. And this limits the capacity for active engagement and alignment across the business, which brings me to the second opportunity. Uh, and Hella elegantly put that this, this is a strategic discussion that has to be held at board level. So the second point is that actioning the SDGs as a part of the overall business strategy is kind of a key part here. Data can be a great tool for leveraging the influence that's required to get the right people to listen and to encourage key decision makers to come to the table and think about these issues in order to effectively integrate them into business strategy. The sustainable development graph on the page might be familiar. It's an established concept, but it bears repeating in the context of this discussion. There's a great deal of complexity in identifying impacts and opportunities. It would be easy to get lost and caught up in the hype around the sustainable development goals, but at the core of this is a simple yet elegant goal to maintain these three pillars, economy, society, environment. I don't think anybody thought it would be easy, but um, this kind of approach is very effective. As an example, uh, from analysis carried out on companies participating in the integrated reporting pilot program, the IIRC program, it finds that the number of companies filing an annual integrated report as part of an integrated risk management strategy is increasing over time. So the release of an integrated report doesn't automatically imply that a company has integrated risk management uh, within its business. But for those companies that have an integrated risk management process, the results indicate higher performance um, over companies that just release an integrated report um, and those that don't do anything at all. Another key component to aligning the goals with business strategy is innovation, um, innovating based on strengths and seeking opportunity externally. Uh, so this webinar is proudly participating in Global Partnerships Week. This is a US State Department initiative to promote SDG 17, Partnership for the Goals. And we're proudly advocating that goal because it strives for collective action to achieve a common purpose. Um, and this can be reflected in the third opportunity, which is about enabling information sharing through transparency. Sustainable development is a non-zero sum game. Decision makers need information to measure and manage the effectiveness of programs and leaders that demonstrate and share best practice will help laggards in that journey. journey. Um, so institutions will need to demonstrate transparency in order for the collaborative nature of the SDGs to work effectively. This is particularly interesting when you consider the relationship between investors and companies. So earlier this year, the London Stock Exchange held a conference for institutional investors and companies on ESG reporting. Um, we're in attendance and I think there were two really interesting takeaways from that discussion. First is that institutional investors put their hands up and admit that they need to come to the table and disclose how they use sustainability or ESG information in their decision making processes. So companies can encourage the leaders in responsible investment um, and hold them to account to this, I think. And secondly, it's clear that companies need to educate the investment community about non-financial issues. Investors use public disclosure documents in their analysis. There's a desire on their part to have non-financial issues packaged neatly for their purposes. But this doesn't necessarily account for how differently each company operates where they operate in the world, what their regulatory and political lens is, and what their sphere of influence and impact is in relation to sustainable development. So there's an opportunity here for companies 
to demonstrate leadership in the field of sustainability reporting that allows them to set the standard for their industry, uh, to pave the way for other companies to follow suit, uh, as well as setting a direction for how investors can measure risk and opportunity in non-financial issues. So finally, with every opportunity, there's a challenge, whether it's convincing the right people to get involved, deciding on the right course of action, or, or simply finding the right information to enable the process. Technology has a part to play in this. It can enable the SDGs um, through education, identifying best practice, managing strategy and uh, monitoring progress. At eReValue, our mission is to help companies seize that opportunity because the sustainable development goals are so timely and relevant. We're launching this SDGs tool. Um, the SDG radar maps the actionable business issues identified in the SDG compass for companies to benchmark performance across each of the 17 goals, as well as comparing their position in relation to peers. It enables companies to align the goals with business strategy and compare their performance with other companies, as well as identifying examples of best practice that they can action in their own business and view those issues through a regulatory and stakeholder lens. Uh, so it's available throughout the proprietary software. Uh, please do get in touch if you have any more questions about this. This is an example here of a peer analysis, um, my position versus what my peers are doing. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, that's it from me for now, and thanks for your time. Great. Thanks, everyone. That was really an interesting discussion. We've had a lot of questions roll in, so um, I feel like one of the questions that we've seen come up a lot, and please keep sending in questions to the audience, um, but maybe we'd start with talking about reporting the SDGs um, and what steps the private sector can take to overcome data availability here. Um, what are the keys needed for writing a sustainability report and including this? And can new reporting frameworks actually change the situation? Maybe we'll start with Elisa. I know that, um, UNEP is probably working with some of the groups that are working on sustainability reporting for SDGs or reporting in general for SDGs? Thank you. Thank you, Emily. And maybe just to um, start with a remark that might clear some doubts in the conversation. I really don't think the conversation should be aiming at discussing an SDG reporting framework. My sense is that we're all a bit overwhelmed by the existence of reporting frameworks, so we don't probably need a new one, but we need to try and make sure that what exists and the way in which they are used becomes helpful also for the purpose of telling more about how companies are contributing to the sustainable development goals. So I, I really would encourage that we shift from a conversation that is about a reporting framework to a conversation which is about how do we change the way in which we think and manage our operation, our relationship with uh, other uh, institutions and actors, and then we can tell about it through our uh, reporting practices. Um, I would also want to take the opportunity to really stress one of the points that emerged in some presentation, and I think Samantha made this point very clearly, which is a point of joining hands with other actors. Um, she rightly mentioned that at times when an individual institution look at the, at the goals and targets and think, oh, how can I really demonstrate I'm changing the world in such a, an ambitious uh, objective. Uh, what is really relevant is the willingness and openness to uh, join hands and share the effort with others. So uh, I would, again, genuinely stir the discussion a bit further away from really measuring and from reporting framework and really focusing on how can we tell how we are advancing towards uh, those goals. I also heard, and I think you reflected in the in, when kickstarting the conversation, a comment on um, a lot of um, corporates already producing sustainability reports or, or disclosing sustainability information. 
Well, I think the figures do not really cater for that statement. There's a huge room for improvement from uh, the global business community. There have been over time a growth in such practices, but there still is quite a way to go into these becoming more widespread and more quality based. That, that's really helpful, Elisa. I, I think that's a really interesting point about, um, you know, there being a lot of reporting already and companies thinking about um, ways that they can use this sort of as a materiality assessment on making sure they're presenting the most relevant and op information and opportunities. Um, Helen, do you have anything you can add? Yeah, I think, and I totally agree with you, Lisa. That this is this is uh, this is not about another reporting framework. This is our goals. This is our pain points for the next. Uh, well, I was going to say 15 years, but a little bit less than that on, until 2030. But probably also after that, we need to figure out how we're going to run the world, not just going back to where where we came from. Um, and and I'm heading up also the the Global Compact Network Canada, so uh, the United Nations Global Compact. And we actually did a survey of the Canadian. So I should say that this is the Canadian. Uh, uh, companies, uh, etc. And we asked in terms of to what extent do each of the following sentences describe the actions that your organization has taken on the SDGs? And one of them was improve existing tools and resources to more ac accurately measure and track the organization's impact and progress on the implementation of the SDGs. Here in Canada, uh, there is 9% that says they had attempted and completed. There's 42% that it has that are attempting to do that, not yet completed. And then there's 31% considering, but not attempted. And then 18% of, of those that answered said, said, no, not at all. The other point was in terms of, of the governments. Uh, so this is not only for companies that needs to figure out how to report. Governments are also sitting right now and saying, how do we report uh, to to the UN in terms of the achievement uh, and progress on the goals. And if you ask me, we need to have an alignment because the companies in a country are you know, also those that, that make up then the, 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 the country's uh, contribution in, in terms of sustainable development goals. So, so we need to have an, a different approach in that. But I totally agree, Will, is that this is not about yet another framework. This is much more strategic. This is in all the all the frameworks that's out there are aligning to the sustainable development goals. Um, but I think what's perhaps most important here is that we don't look at this perhaps as as non-financial data or non-financial issues. Um, I think Sam from from Scotiabank was saying that gender equality was a, one of the issues, and again looking at the Canadian survey, gender equality come up number one. But when we then look at McKinsey's study, it says that 28 trillion US dollars could be added to the global economy as women paid the, an identical role as men in the labor market. So thinking about International uh, Women's Day tomorrow, this is not a non-financial issue. This is very much financial issues and it should be part of the reporting to the investors in, in integrated reports, et cetera. Those are great points, Holly. Um, yeah, I want to turn to Sam for a minute because um, people are asking on the line here, um, you know, can you share one of your success stories in this area, um, a way to think about it sort of contextually in a business? Um, I think you might have something to add about this idea, Sam. Yeah, I just, um I think that, that our success actually is shifting our focus um, so that we can have greater impact. But I think I, I wanted what I wanted to add was that we, we often get caught up in the reporting, but what really we need to be focusing on is how are we measuring our impact? How do we know that what we're doing uh, is making an impact and will drive change either today or by 2030? So um, I think, uh, one of our key successes in all of the initiatives around young people in the community is also changing the way we are measuring our impact. So 
Uh, a lot of organizations measure impact by the number of dollars you invest in an organization's program and the number of volunteer hours. But that actually has nothing to do with the impact you're having on the people that are participating or that need that program. So I think that's a really important uh, takeaway for all of you to look at how you're measuring impact. Yeah, it's, it's interesting too when you think about it also in the future. I've heard companies tell me that they've gone through their innovation pipeline and tried to look at the SDGs in terms of innovation and saying, well, which projects here should we prioritize? Which of these innovation projects in our pipeline are connected to the sustainable development goals? Um, let's move on to another question we have from the audience. Um, what about linking executive pay to achievement of sustainable development goals? Does anybody have um, any thoughts on that being a driver? It, it's, it's Hella here. Um, I think that we are seeing um, incentives being aligned. You might not call it sustainable development goals. Let's, let's face it, the sustainable development goals were adopted, uh, well, we all agreed, all 193 member states agreed in September 2015, and then came into force in 2016. We are just starting to 2017. So let's let's face it, we, we nobody is fully there yet. Um, but I do see that there are companies that start to say, how do we ensure that this is part of our incentive scheme? Um, and your example in terms of innovation, how do we look at that? How do we look at talent uh, and, and other issues? So it might not be fully where you say that is SGG number five or that is, but you will, you are starting to see that. And I think also if you start to ask the, the investors, they might also ask questions in terms of how do you ensure long-term viability of the company? And again, how do you incentivize the, both the board, but also people with, within the company uh, to, to drive that change, that transformation. Um, so, so yes, we're seeing it, but I think you'll see more and more. Great. Um, anybody else have a, anything to add on that? Samantha, maybe? <laughs> Thanks for putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> We, so I can say right now, there is no uh, link to executive pay uh, at this time. Um, and as Helly said, I, I don't think that, that the key is to use the link to the term SDGs. I think what's happening is that organizations are linking executive pay to not just the business results of the year, but the long-term sustainable initiatives of an organization. So um, that could be anything from an investment in technology, which is going to enable um, the future business of tomorrow, but also changes the way people interact with your organization. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, an example is how we provide access to um, people and communities that are perhaps in remote locations that don't have a branch or don't have necessarily uh, internet access, right? So how do you enable that? So um, I think there are, I think th it's not a direct link to say that, that their uh, executive pay is linked to achieving the SDGs. I think, it, again, it's all about how you're framing that dialogue at the executive level. So your outcome might be exactly where you want it to be, but the way you're framing it is going to be in language that resonates with those executives and with the board who approves executive pay. That's a great point, Samantha. Um, yeah, I've definitely seen companies just starting to incorporate sustainability into executive pay targets. Um, it's very new, maybe only 10 or 20 percent of companies have some sort of direct link in terms of achieving a sustainability goal, but um, they are getting there. Uh, what about, Elisa, could you talk a little bit about how um, companies and universities and some of the people on this call could work with local governments in terms of implementation on the developing world? What are some strategies for engagement? Yes, Emily, I'll, I'll probably also dovetail a little bit on the earlier uh, question and replies. Uh, not specifically to address the aspect of uh, SDGs being included into PACE because I think it might make sense to slightly reframe our discussion in the sense that the sustainable development goals has, have, in the way in which they have been conceived, are not for a specific group. So they are not only for business, 
they are not only for government, they are not only for local government and cities, they are not only for academia. If we want to achieve these goals, and I think that's everybody's understanding, we have to work all together towards them. Um, and we need to have them be part, being tr translated into the core strategy in which each of these different actors operate. So they have to become the DNA of a business strategy, they have to become the central pillar of public policies, of the way in which a city or, or local government is uh, handling uh, its affairs, its businesses, the way in which research and scientific information is produced by academia. So uh, the, the translation of the sustainability agenda into the agenda of each of these actors, I think it's, it is going to be the first step in the right direction. And obviously, and not by chance, uh, immediately after having agreed on the Sustainable Development Goal, the whole UN system moved to a next step, which is the one of the discussion that was convened in Quito, Ecuador last year, which was the UN Habitat Conference, recognizing the crucial role that cities play in their dynamic and continuous growth into contributing to the sustainable development agenda. And not only in this part of one of the specific goals, which is goal 11, that really specifically look at the dynamics of, uh, of cities in terms of being a catalytic engine for these, uh, uh, for these development to materialize. So, uh, one of the elements that we would need to uh, keep in mind is that this agenda is not for one, it's for everybody, and it really calls for all of these actors to align their agenda, to align their strategy, and to work together towards common goals. So we ourselves are uh, acting both with local institution, with national government, with private sector of different scales and sizes and sectors, because each and every one of these actors have a different role to play and to fulfill in the roadmap, in the sequence of actions that will lead us to those goals and targets. Great. Um, I wanted to go to Erin. Um, next and ask a little bit about how um, companies can sort of ensure they're using technology or data to talk about this. We've gotten a few questions about um, ensuring quality of data. There's no real auditing as companies try and measure this stuff. Um, how can they reliably look into making the SDGs part of their business? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I guess, really technology becomes an enabler in the process. Um, you know, the, all the uh, aspects that Elisa was talking about then in terms of there being different actors in this, the government position, there's like NGOs, there's the companies, investors, um, all having a role to play. There's also a need to connect all of the dots um, uh, and, and pull it all together in some way as well, because I think at a certain point, people are gonna want to see how these issues are progressing and how these things are moving forward and um, technology could do that. So in the initial stages, I would say, um, you're right, like we don't need metrics, we just need the conversation. We need there to be a level of discourse that's happening across groups. But what we wanna be able to do is, um, you know, pull all of that conversation together and like look at, look at what's the examples of best practice um, that we can draw from those. So the, the narrative is really important and having information and discussion out there, you know, is what's going to drive people in the direction of, of pulling together um, metrics over time, measurable outcomes, you know, you know, that's really where I think technology plays that part is in enabling all of those processes and putting it all together uh, and, in, and, and in driving it forward over time in a neat way. 
That was really helpful, Erin. Um, another question we're getting from the line, this one for Samantha. Um, people are asking sort of for ways to convince senior leadership and companies about the importance of this and to report on their sustainability policies and make sure senior leadership is taking this type of thing seriously. What, what are some strategies, Samantha, that you've seen be effective? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think that, um, that there are a lot of competing interests uh, at the executive level. And so I, I talked earlier about using a language that resonates with them. Um, that's one strategy. The other is try not to boil the ocean all at once. So talk about, uh, try to get um, a point across or a message across to your executives on one specific area at a time. If that's, depend, it all depends on how your, your executives interact and how uh, many committees that you have to go through to, to have those dialogues. But our, we've had a lot of success about changing not only the, the language we're using with executives so it resonates, um, but also how we're framing the topics that we want to talk about um, so that they understand that there are opportunities and or risks and or um, uh, places where the, the bank should uh, be more heavily focused. So uh, that would be that would be my short answer. It's a journey. You're not going to get there overnight. So understand that in your approach as well. Okay. That, that's a great, those are some great tips. Well, thank you. We still had so many questions coming in, but I think we're running out of time. So we wanted to just sort of go over some of the action points um, and take away from the event. Rupert, is there a slide for that? Yeah, so here's here's some of the takeaways that we discussed during today. Um, thinking about corporate reporting and technology and data as a way to measure and um, materially assess you know, the future, thinking of the SDGs as a crystal ball that can show you, hey, here are some opportunities, here are some risks, and um, as Samantha said, finding a way to focus um, senior leaders' attention on maybe one area at a time. Um, as we heard from Heli and um, Elisa, the SDGs provide a great platform for engaging the board and other stakeholders um, in the company. It's just a framework to think about, but not necessarily important, but use the information we already have to say, here's how we can prioritize these huge pain points in the world. Um, companies can also leverage the SDGs as an opportunity, like we said, looking at your innovation pipeline to prioritize projects, um, thinking about what your which ones matter most to your company or are most achievable and thinking about the impact um, that you can actually have. And then we had that technology can also help companies sort of distill the sustainable development goals into actionable business issues and sort of help you identify where um, you can find and monitor these trends and seeing that you can make a difference in some of these goals. Um, and it's not just people, it's, um, it's everyone, it's not just businesses, it's people, it's governments, um, these are goals for the whole world, so we can all come together in different ways to address them. Thank you so much for a wonderful webinar. I thought this was really insightful and um, enjoyed all the comments and feedback and lively audience, so thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Emily, and thank you to all the speakers and participants that made this such a a lively and insightful discussion today. I feel like, as you mentioned, Emily, we, we've had more questions than we're able to answer. Um, so perhaps this uh, actually lends itself to a, a part two at some stage. So stay tuned for that. Um, I just wanted to mention before we sign off um, that if you do want to find out how our technology can help your business, then do get in touch with Erin or myself um, by the, the email contacts on the screen there. We will be sending out the recording later this week. Um, so we look forward to, to hearing from you then. Um, so yeah, just thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.